Do you like car detailing? Please subscribe, Wheeler Detailers. Hit the bell icon and watch all our videos. So what's up everybody? Thank you for tuning in again on the Wheeler Detailers YouTube channel. This is a little bit of a different video. It's a so-called explainer video and I try to explain as good as I can. So if there's some things unclear for you, you still have got some questions, then note them here below and we'll be happy to answer you and help you and everybody else that can read along as well. Um, we get the last weeks, aka months, a lot of questions on polishing, so on paint correction. So what pad do I need with what polish, for example? And um, for what kind of paint defects? What kind of scratches are polishable and what kind of scratches are not polishable? And this is a very, very wide spectrum and there are more ways that lead to Rome. Um, I can only explain to you one way that always will also lead to Rome and I hope it will be easy to understand for you and you can repeat it for yourself as well and have the same kind of results or even better as me that's also possible so we start with the polishing pads and with the polishes let me put them here on the cards in the right order because within chemical guys there is a certain kind of variety and I have my pads here on this side. So, before we're gonna start to explain the products itself, everything with polish happens so-called on a grid scale. And Yoni made a nice infographic. That's a nice word. So Yoni made an infographic. Uh, and he will also link it in the video here below so you can uh, click on it and uh, download it for yourself. Um, and if you can see it correctly here, this grid scale starts on 1200 grit and ends on 3000 plus grit. And on this grid scale, a lot of things are happening. And you will see that here on the, on the starting point of the 1200, 1500 grit, you here have a lot of deep scratches. And for deep scratches, you can figure that out for yourself. If there's a scratch on the paint, where you can more or less uh, stick with your nails in. But it's still a scratch that's in the clear coat or in the color coat. I'll come back on that topic a little bit later. Then you go a little bit more to the middle segment, which is around the 1750 to let's say 2500 grid range. So um, this is more or less aimed for the swirls. And swirls are like the wash marks and the scratches that you get from bad washing methods. And then on the end, the 2,500, 3,000 uh, grid plus range, you see holograms, which comes from uh, not correct rotary polishing. Now, and all these kind of parts of the grid range follow on until each other. So more or less, you can conclude that on this side of the grid range, let's say 1,200 grid, and on this side of the grid range, let's say 3,000 plus grid, here you got heavy scratches, and here you have the most beautiful paint that you can probably think of. And we go out of polishing, we have a polishes here of water-based polishes. So that means water-based polishes will not cover up or mask up or anything like that. Uh, and they will probably, in the stronger segments, they will probably dust a little bit more than oil or petroleum-based polishes. But this is just how the products are being designed and that's where we have to work with. So I hope this gives you a little bit of an idea of the basics and hopefully with this infographic, uh, when you look at your own car's paint, you can easily understand if you see some swirls that it's around two, two and a half thousand grit. And if you see some deep scratches, but still in the clear coat and are in the uh, color coat, they are sandable or and are polishable. So here we have the other table which says something about the buildup of the paint layer. So from bottom to top we have the panel which is the uh, sheet, uh, plate, uh, sheet material uh, from metal, from aluminium or plastic. Then we have the primer layer which is also called the base coat. Um, this is often uh, white and or grey and this is being used to uh, level the sheet and plate material into an acceptable smooth layer where uh, color and clear coat can adhere on. Then we have the color paint and, and this paint gives of course the beauty to the shape of the car. 
and on top we have the clear coat. So this is the transparent layer on top of the color coat. And these three layers all together vary a lot in paint thickness. So the primer, the color coat and the clear coat itself on, on certain cars maybe only 60, 68 or 70 microns which I think is really 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 thin. But on other cars they can be 250 microns plus. And if you want to have a paint thickness gauge which is a really easy tool and we also made a demo video on that on how to use that. Then you can always have an indication on how thick paint is and that really really helps so you can determine what kind of sand and our polishing session are suitable uh, for that uh, certain car because if you have a car with only 70 or 80 microns on it there is not so much paint thickness that you can work on and that creates risks of course if you would polish through the paint then yeah, you will see the primer layer again and this is the white or the gray color and which is not so nice to explain to your customer you made a mistake and you have polished through the paint so uh, my own rules uh, are there, uh, which I have experienced over the last 15 years that when the paint is thinner than 100 microns, I do not sand anymore. And when the paint is thinner than 80 microns, I do not rotary polish anymore. So I'm only gonna use the orbital polisher. So you can also download this infographic and then um, yeah, have some guidance for that for yourself as well. So we're gonna go back to the grid scale i'm gonna put it here on my lap and to start with we have certain amount of pads and the uh, hex logic quantum pads vary a lot in hardness we have them in yellow orange uh, green right white blue black and red and then we have wool but we keep that separate for a moment so normally the yellow and or orange pad you would like to use in the strongest ra uh, range of the grid scale. And you would use these with, for example, the V32 strong polish or the V30 or super strong polish and the V34 strong polish, both water based. So the V32 goes from 1200 to 1500 grit and the V34 goes from 1500 to 2000 grit. Now, based with these pads and polishes, you can uh, remove uh, um, a lot of heavy swirls or with the V34 also a lot of deep scratches that you can actually feel with the tips of your nails, as long as they're in the clear coat or in the color coat. Then you want to choose the po polisher that you would be working on. We're gonna do a polishing video in a later stadium, so that's also nice for you to know to check out. So we can choose a rotary polisher which only makes circular motions. And you use these more or less with around 900 to 1000 RPM. And then you have the orbital polishers. In this case, we have a Bigfoot 15 here. And the Bigfoot 15 is a dual action polisher, which makes an imitation of your hand movement like this and spins at the same time as well and you use these more or less on let's say four to five thousand rpm and that's uh, both machines can be used for that uh, often the rotary polisher is a direct drive and with that will break down the abrasive in the polish much faster but uh, an orbital orbital polisher like the bigfoot 15 or the s15 would polish a little bit more comfortable and it's easier to maneuver and to and to work with when you're beginning with polishing and detailing. Then we go to the middle segment. In the middle segment we find the green and the white Quantum X Logic Pad. The green is a little bit more hard than the white one and the green one also has an open cell structure and the white one has a closed cell structure. So with that, the green one is a little bit better for use on uh, a harder ceramic type of clear coats, for example on Audis and Volkswagens. And the white ones are more for a little bit like traditional paints like Peugeot, for example, or Ford. And you can use these with the V36 polish. Now, then we go to the finishing part of the grid scale and we have there I would say two pads, we actually have three, but I'll explain that to you later. 
We have a blue pad here and a black pad. So the blue is a little bit harder as light polishing to finishing and the black is a finishing pad. And we can use that with the V38 polish. And what's standing here from very strong to super refined, we more or less can remove all kinds of paint defects that we will determine on a car. So there are some exceptions. You just saw me taking away the red pad because the red pad is a finesse finishing pad and it's more aimed to apply uh, butter weather bags, uh, jet seal, um, top coat sealant, uh, V7 liquid wax. So cream or liquid products that do finishing or beautify or add more gloss um, and you want to apply that with the machine you can use a red pad for that so the red pad should be there then we have the vss polish which is a little bit of both this is a one step polish that does a grid scale of 2000 to 2800 which more or less fits a little bit in the middle of here I really love the VSS, it's very usable. So if you want to do one step polishes and you want to do for that one step, kind of a large grid range. So from 2000 to 2800, this is the, oh, sorry, you should have it here. Position it wrong. You can have it be using or your green or your white pad and do a really large grid scale with that. And then on the completely other end here, you have me see saw me here with a wool pad this is the crazy wool pad it feels very soft but it is very 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 strong um, and it creates a lot of heat and especially in the strongest part of the grid scale you might want to have a lot of heat because with heat and with speed so on your orbital and or on your rotary uh, polisher the strong uh, polish that's in these strong uh, that's in these uh, as an ingredient in these products will uh, wear down faster with heat and wool and the polishing uh, activity. Um, so the abrasive uh, particle in the cream will break down faster to the end of that grid scale. Yes, with this kind of wool pads you, and these kind of water-based polishers, you will create some polishing dust. For myself, it's not really a problem. I have a sidekick on hand or I use some compressed air that I can blow it off anyway. So I don't really have an issue with that. And the cool thing is, is that you don't cover up or mask up. So you see perfectly what kind of results that you're getting. And if they're not satisfying enough, um, then you can repeat or choose another combination uh, to work with uh, at that uh, spot. Um, so yeah, more or less with this information, I hope to have guided you uh, a lot on what kind of pad and what kind of camouflage polish you can use for what kind of painted effects, so deep scratches, swirls or holograms. And uh, with that, uh, yeah, I hope it helps you to uh, detail better, faster, more efficient uh, on your car. So, like I said in the beginning, if you got some questions or things that are unclear for you in this video, then please let me know. Write it here below. I'm happy to uh, help you and guide, uh, guide you with this. Uh, you can also email us uh, if you got some photos from your car and you've tried a couple of combinations and for some reason it didn't work. Email us those photos, then we can take a look at it and give you some, uh, some uh, tips and uh, tricks and advices on that. Or you can chat with us over the website or over the WhatsApp service. So thank you very much for um, watching this video. If you didn't do it already, subscribe to the Wheel of Details YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon so every time we do an upload, you get informed ASAP. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.